Hi, my name is Cody Hosterman, Technical Director at Pure Storage for VMware Solutions. Today we're going to be talking about Pure Storage and vRealize Automation. In part one of this video series, we'll be discussing creating a vRealize Automation tenant. So in this section, let's create a new tenant in vRealize Automation. The first step is to log into the administrative console of vRealize Automation. This can be accessed at the IP or FQDN of the vRealize Automation appliance. So now I'll create a new tenant. And you can name this whatever you want. And then of course give it a description that makes sense for the description of this tenant. Furthermore, you can give it a URL name. This is the name they're going to type in into the URL bar when accessing this tenant. And of course give it a made thread of email for contact around this tenant. So when complete, I'll hit Submit and Next. This will create the tenant. The next step is actually add users into this tenant. Now, of course, you can use things like LDAP and Active Directory to add users in automatically from your standard um, user configuration tool. But you always want to create some local users as well. So I'm going to create a couple of local users. An administrative user, and this is going to be the person that creates the tenant, manages it, imports workflows, things like that. I'll also create a regular user for just provisioning storage and things like that, and then also a support user. I'll skip through some of these steps to show you the users have been created. The last step is I want to identify someone that's going to be a tenant administrator. Someone that can actually change, create users, uh, add in resources, and so forth. And also if you're doing IIS work, you want to add in a user that can administer that as well. My tenant's completed. Now I can log out of the administrative console. The next step is actually to configure our tenant. So now I'm going to change my URL to that URL that I identified earlier, private cloud. You proceed it with vcac slash org slash the name of your tenant. So I'll log in with my administrative user that I called earlier, cloud admin. Now that I've logged in my tenant as an admin, I can start configuring it. So the first step we're going to run through here is creating what they call a business group. This is a selection of users that have control inside of my tenant. You can create multiple business groups, of course. Now there are other steps you might want to follow first, depending on what you're trying to do. But we're following the basic steps here to allow the infrastructure, or aka anything as a service control, inside of vRealize Automation. And the first requirement here is to have a business group. Now I can add my users into this particular business group. This shows who actually manages this entire group of people, who supports it, who has shared access to certain resources, and of course end users as well, people that are managing and requesting their own resources. You can add groups or individual users. You can configure this as well, but we'll skip this for now. Now that I've created my business group, I can move on. So the next step is to create a service. A service is simply a collection of catalog items that you can provision access to for a certain set of users and a certain set of catalog items that are usually related. You can use your own custom icons if you want. And at Pure, we have a Flash Array VRA icon pack that you can download and use if you want to. I'll add an owner to this service, my cloud admin and also a support user, my support user I created earlier. I'll complete that and my service is now done. Now the next step is to create a custom group. This specifies who in the service and business group can actually be application or infrastructure as a service admins. In this case, I'm giving all the administrator roles to my administrator and only my administrator. So my cloud admin is the only person in this tenant that's going to be able to import catalog items, create catalog items, publish them, and provision them to end users. Now that my custom group is done, I can move on. Now I'm going to log out and I have to log back in. Now that I've given cloud admin additional access, I can start creating custom resources inside of my tenant. But I have to log out and log back in to inherit those new permissions. 
So I'm going to log back into my tenant as cloud admin. And the first thing you'll note here is you see a whole bunch of additional tabs, design being one of them. So what I want to do is specify the types of objects I want users to eventually be able to manage. You can do this at any time, but right now is a good time to do it. So you can search through all vRealize Orchestrator item types, and you can see pure storage in there under PS and then flash rate connection, volume, snapshots. You can go ahead and identify and also customize how these objects look like in vRealize Automation. I'm going to import flash array, volume, snapshot, and also some VMware object types too. What I'm specifying is these are the VRO item types or object types that I want a person inside of vRealize Automation to be able to own, manage, and change. And now I'm not specifying actual instances of that object, but just the type. So I'm not importing all the flash ray object types, but just a few. This last one will be protection groups in case I want a user to own one of our protection policies. Now the last one thing I want to import is a VMware data store. I want end users to be able to own an eventual data store object. So even VMware type objects you're going to want to import if you want them to be able to own that type. So a certain uh, virtual switch, a VMware cluster, an ESX server, anything like that. So I'm going to identify data store and I'm going to get a label VMFS and finish that wizard. So now I've imported all my objects. The last step is do some branding. Make the tenant your own. Add colors, add pictures. So I'm going to go into the administration tab and go down to branding. Now I've already automated, I've already customized the overall header and footer as you can see pure storage and so forth. But what I want to customize for this individual tenant is the login screen. Using the pure icon and also changing our color from the default green to pure storage orange. Once I've configured my branding, I'm done setting up my tenant and start ready to provision my resources. Thanks for watching and look for video 2 on catalog items.